All right, let's talk about how to protect yourself from narcissists as an empath or a highly sensitive person. This is something that is really important because if you are an empath or an HSP, there's a very good chance you've been in some toxic relationships with narcissists. It's possible that a family member of yours displays narcissistic behavior and and you also have friends or coworkers that really bother you because they're just taking and taking and taking all the time and they're not treating you very well because they also display some narcissistic patterns of behavior. And so I want to dive into it with you guys today and stick around to the end because I'll be sharing details of a free relationship mastery call that's going to teach you how to thrive in your relationships in just a span of a few weeks. So here we go. If you're an empath or an HSP, you're a giver. You're naturally attuned to other people's needs and you're really good at meeting them. You really like meeting them. It gives you a sense of fulfillment to be there for other people. And the narcissist, well, they're takers. They don't really understand other people's needs. They don't really have the capacity for empathy. It's just not a part of their system. And it comes from a, from a wounded place. So these are not bad people. These are wounded, insecure people that are just trying to navigate their life as best they can. And unfortunately, it uh, sometimes gets a little bit ugly. But they're takers, and they, they don't really have any qualms of depleting you of your energy, of taking up your time, of ruining your life in some cases. It can be pretty ugly, and I'm sure some of you know what I mean if you're watching this video. So here's how you protect yourself from the takers. For one thing, you have to get really good at spotting a narcissist. Because un unless you're able to identify someone who may very well be one of these takers that could use and abuse you as a sensitive, empathic person, you're going to fall victim to this pattern over and over again. And you're going to end up in these toxic relationships after you just vowed never to do that again. Because here's the thing, guys. Narcissists, they can be hard to spot. On the surface, they tend to be very um, charming, uh, very free-spirited, generous souls. And, and they love your attention, so they love having you around. They'll invite you. Oh, they'll invite you to hang out all the time. You might be lonely sitting at home and they'll be like, hey, come on over, let's hang. And it isn't until the relationship deepens, whether it's a friendship or a romantic connection, that things start to reveal themselves. And at that point, it can be a little bit too late. So keep an eye out for the show. Keep an eye out for someone who's displaying this attention-seeking behavior. If they just have to be in the spotlight and you see them uh, as the center of attention in all these social engagements and if you're in a conversation with them and it's very one-sided where they want everything to be about them, they'll redirect the conversation uh, in their direction. These are the cues, the subtle and not so subtle cues to be careful and I would suggest stepping away unless you want to risk getting entangled because in my experience these relationships they're not worth it unless it's a family member and this is something that you you have to work through and, and, and make peace with regardless it can be a wise move to just walk away and focus on uh, people that are more willing and able to meet your needs and to care about you and your feelings. So keep an eye out for this attention-seeking behavior. Keep an eye out for someone who has 
an inflated sense of ego, an inflated sense of self-importance. And just pay attention to whether or not this person displays overt signs of compassion or kindness. Are they really looking out for other people? You know, are they really being being kind and, and open-hearted? Or are their displays really just designed to give them positive feedback and positive reinforcement? They don't really mean the words that they're saying. They don't really mean the compliment that they're offering. They're just enjoying the, the praise, validation, and approval that they get in return. Because this is what the narcissists feed off of. Right? It's this emotional feedback from others. And they don't understand boundaries so well. So in order to protect yourself, it's very important to, to set those boundaries. You can't assume that they're going to understand and honor unspoken boundaries, for example. So be quick to state those boundaries and say, hey, I'm sorry, um, that's not okay with me. I don't like it when you talk like that and I'm not going to tolerate that. Or whatever that boundary looks like, you have to just know to practice them and to set them. And I have another video on how to set boundaries as an empath or HSP that will fill you in on more of those details. Just know that when you're dealing with a narcissist, you have to become a boundary setting ninja. This has to become a learned skill something that you know how to practice. You also need to understand your needs because when an empath is with a narcissist, your needs are not taken um, into account. It's always going to be about their needs. That's just how, how they're wired. And so if, if you're not checking in with yourself, to see if your needs are getting met, it's you don't stand a chance. You also have to understand, in the first place, what are your needs? Because until you can check in, or until you can understand what your needs are, checking in will, will do no good. So be very attuned to what your needs are and, and be on alert. With other people that are more balanced in their personalities, you don't have to be on such high alert to make sure your needs are getting met. But with the narcissist, you have to advocate for yourself. This is very important because they're not going to uh, be looking out for you. So you have to look out for yourself. And this is a really important thing to master as an empath or HSP with anybody, which is how to, how to stand up for yourself, how to empower yourself to say, hey, I have needs and they're important and I'm going to make sure that they, that they get met. So the other part of this is taking responsibility of your experience, not, um, not being the, the nice person who just goes along and says yes to the whims of other people and the conversation they want to have and the, the things and experiences and events that they want to have. and. And then the resulting resentment and frustration and disappointment that you get from that. Because here's the, the honest truth, is that it's on you to avoid those situations and it's on you to create the positive situations where you get to feel good about yourself and having your, your needs met. This is something that took me a long time to learn. It's, it's not always easy when the default pattern is to take care of other people. Yeah, what do you want to do? What, what do you need right now? How, how can I help you right now? You know, this reflex, it's very honorable and noble, and it can serve you in some beautiful ways with the right people. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, it will get you into big trouble. So be careful for those tendencies to, to people please. You have to learn how to say no say, no, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not available right now. You have to check in with yourself. How am I feeling? Am I a yes or am I a no? And if you're a no, you have to be very quick and very firm with these boundaries with the narcissist. So 
with the narcissist, you have to practice all of these good um, habits very skillfully because they can maneuver around your boundaries if you're not careful, if you're not quick enough. So it's, it's an advanced form of practice, let's call it, is to navigate the relationship with a narcissist. It's like, you know, once you've learned the basics of how to set boundaries, how to say no to people, how to stick up for yourself and speak your needs, well now you have to do it quicker, faster, better, because <laughs> that's what's gonna allow you to be protected from the draining energy of the narcissist because they will take from you until you have nothing left. And I don't want you to let that happen because you're too important and your life matters and your needs matter. And you're a beautiful, amazing, compassionate, kind-hearted person. So be careful out there. And if you are with a narcissist, well, I would invite you to consider leaving the relationship. Because the sad truth is that it's unlikely for them to change. Sadly, they are very wounded. And very often they don't have the self-awareness to understand their wounds and therefore seek help. It's, it's very sad. There's not much that, that they can do when they're coming from this place. Unless they are blessed with that awareness and ability to seek help. So if you're in trouble, if you're in a bad, toxic relationship with a narcissist, find a safe way to exit. Stop giving them what they want. Cut off their supply of the emotional attunement and and everything that you're, you're offering to them out of kindness. You have to shut them off from their supply. They feed off of the validation. They feed off your emotional reactions. That clues them into feeling like they're in control. And you have to be very firm and clear with them. That you're not willing to put up with mistreatment or abuse. And then you, you exit however you need to. But whatever you do, do not overstay your welcome. I have been there, guys. It is very painful. It does not get better. They are not likely to change. What's likely to happen is these same patterns of pain and suffering that you've been experiencing will repeat, likely get worse. They might entice you with some signs of getting better and, and changing and giving you some hope because they're they are manipulative. They understand how to pull your strings. Don't fall for it. Be strong. Be clear. Be direct. And don't let them mess with your emotions. Leave the room. Take space. Take time. Cut off communication. Seek help. Reach out to me. This is something that I help people with. Whatever it takes, get their support so you can exit this relationship, process the relationship, do the healing that is necessary so that you can finally thrive in your relationships and feel really good about yourself. Where you're giving and they're giving, where you're receiving and they're receiving. That's what I want for you. An even, healthy, balanced relationship. And if this is something that you're ready for, well, I would invite you to explore having a phone call with me. Because what I want to offer you guys today is a free 15-minute relationship mastery call where we'll have a chance to diagnose the root cause of your, your relationship challenges and I'll offer you some suggestions on how to set these boundaries, on how to say no and overcome people pleasing, how to overcome codependency, and how to attract the right partner into your life so you can finally thrive in your relationships and ultimately thrive in your life. So that's it guys. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you'd like to stay tuned for more videos, go ahead and hit subscribe and stay tuned for more.
Hope to speak with you soon.